What's up guys, Carter here, and today I'm here with another Digimon deck profile. Today we are going over the new Eospawn deck from PD17. Uh, with the support from PD17, the deck is a lot stronger. We haven't gotten support for this deck since the promo, Morphomon, and then before that was just the support that we had in BT6. So yeah, it's been a long time. The deck is super fun to play. Uh, there's, it's, it's a little bit slow to build up, but you know, the deck is still really fun to play. So without further ado, let's get right into the deck profile. So for the Talmans, we're running four of the Budmon. So you can run any green Talmon that doesn't require you to have green Hammer to use this. Uh, so we're running four Budmon just for the extra TP that it gives. And then for the Tamers, we're gonna start with the Tamers first. We're running for the Memory Center, Menowa. So Menowa is the Memory Center, and then the other effect is whenever you play an ESMon, you can suspend this Tamer to the top three cards of your deck, add a Tamer card or a Digimon with ESMon in the same, and place the remaining to the bottom of the deck. And then on your opponent's turn, while you have ESMon in play, your opponent's uh, Tamers do not unsuspend. So she's really good just because this deck doesn't have inherent evolution draws, since most of the time you will be hard casting them besides your main stack. You get your evolution draws on your main stack, but whenever you hard cast one of your ESMons, you will be losing a card from your hand, so this will help you replenish that. And keeping your opponent's suspend, uh, Tamer suspended is also really strong. So I think she's a pretty good memory setter. And we're also running four of the new Menowas from BT17. So she's got an on play ability, which is by trashing a Morphomon or Eosmon from your hand, you can draw two, so you can use her to dig through your deck. And then on all turns, while you have you spawn, all of your opponent's tamers on play do not activate. So a little bit more tamer hate, which is nice because it locks out some of your opponent's um, three costs on uh, tamers with on play effects like TK, which is nice. And then on your opponent's turn, when one of your EO spawn would leave the battle area, by deleting one of your other EO spawn, you can prevent it from leaving play. So she is the protection that you want in this deck. So there is a protection in this deck which makes it a little bit better just because you also have a way to redirect attacks. So you can have multiple ways to protect your Digimon. Next, we are running two Digimon Emperors. This is mainly here for the Ukumon hate, but whenever you delete something that's level five or below, on both of your turn, you can um, this is Tamer to draw one as well. So that's a little bit of extra draw if you need it. But the second ability is a stronger ability. Uh, it's mainly to combat Ukumon. It's uh, whenever a opponent level three Digimon would move out of the raising area you can get to memory so that would end a lot of turns if they're planning to just push Ukuma on out and search so yeah Digimon Emperor is good a lot of people uh, tech this in a lot of their other decks as well just to uh, combat against Ukumon but in this deck it's perfect because you can cheat them out for with your abilities so Digimon Emperor is perfect for this deck next for the level threes we are running four of the promo Morphomon so Promo Morphomon's ability is, on play you can reveal the top three cards of your deck and you add an Eosmon as well as a Menowa among them and return the rest to the bottom. Then by placing this Digimon uh, as one of your Eosmon's evolution sources, you can play a Menowa uh, for free without paying its cost. So this is pretty good just because it is your main searcher. And then you can also cheat out a Menowa if you already have an Eosmon on board. So yeah, overall this Morph Morphomon is just pretty good. And then the hair ability is, whenever one of your other ESMon is played, this Digimon may Digivolve into one of your uh, ESMon in your hand for the evolution cost uh, reduced by three. So you can Digivolve for cheap with this Morphomon. So she is pretty good for that as well. And we are also running for Morphomon from BT17. So this is a new Morphomon. And <clears throat> on your turn, when this, would when this Digimon would Digivolve into a ESMon, you can reduce the cost by one. So that makes your Eosmon's one cost to evolve, which is pretty good. And then the inheritance ability is when one of your other Eosmon is played, this Digimon may Digivolve into an Eosmon with the evolution cost reduced by three. So it's the same ability, uh, just because it's a really good ability. So yeah, you, you'll have a lot of ways to play Eosmons. So yeah, you're just gonna get a free evolution, which is, which is nice. The deck needs it. Next, we are gonna be running Four of the BT17 Eosmon level four. So this is the new support that we got in the deck. And it helps out the deck quite a bit. So its ability is, 
When Digivolving, if it's your turn, you can play a White Tamer uh, with a pay co play cost of 4 or less, or a level 5 or lower EO spawn from your hand by paying 2 cost. If this uh, effect is played, your opponent may play a Tamer from their hand with a pants cost. So you do get to give your opponent a free Tamer, but that's okay because we have ways, we can take advantage of that later on, just because we can gain power for Tamers on the board. But it, it can be a double-edged sword, so yeah. Next, uh, for we're also running four of the BT6 ES bonds. So this is the old one. On play, you can play a white tamer without uh, with the pay cost of four or less. From your hand without paying memory cost, and then your opponent may pay with tamer as well. So again, this is a double-edged sword. But this one is an on-play ability, so most of the time you will be hard casting this while you'll be uh, evol evolving this. So there is that. But this one combos with your ES Mons a little bit more just because when you evolve into this, you can choose to play a ES Mon instead, and which will, which will let you did evolve into another ES Mon, which is which is nice. And then the oh I forgot to talk about inherit abilities. Sorry about that. So the inherit ability for this EOS mod, this one here, lets you switch targets. So when an opponent's Digimon attacks, you may switch the attack target to one of your EOS mod. So if you're it's attacking your main stack, you can change it to a to one of your fodder EOS mod just because uh, you are prone to battle. So yeah, you'll, you'll move it, uh, just redirect attack, especially against decks that can raid. It's pretty good. So there's that, and then this responsibility is uh, this one is uh, whenever you when attacking you can play a white tamer with a play cost of four or less from hand with a plane's memory cost. So again, you can cheese out all your menawas and your doom emperor, which is really nice. And then for the other level f for the level fives, we are running four of the new level five ES bond from BD17. So this one, on play on evolution, you can uh, your opponent may play a tamer in the hand without paying the memory cost. If they don't, you can play a white tamer with the play cost of four or less without paying memory cost, and then you can de digivolve one of your opponent's uh, Digimon for every two tamers. So you can use this to kind of remove, quote unquote, remove uh, really sticky cards. Uh, of course, if they are immune to abilities, you still can't remove them. But if they have like area removal abilities, you can kind of just rip the, the top cards off just so you can you can make your make your day a little bit easier. Uh, but yeah, so we're running four of those and a hair ability is just a change target ability as well. So yeah, it's good. And then for the other cards we are running, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 13 ES Mon from BD16. This is the these are bullets. You you want to have these in your hand so you can slap them out with your abilities. So you can have as many as you want. This this slot is pretty flexible. If you want to like have some spicy text, these are the cards to take out. Uh, but I think 13 is a good number because you I have at least like one or two in these in my hand at all times, which is what you need. And the ability is, whenever this card attacks, you can uh, play a level 5 or lower EOS Mon with a magnet's cost. And the her ability is just to give your give this Digimon plus 1k. So it's simple. They don't have Rush. If they have Rush, they will be too good. This deck will be like super good if they have Rush. But no, you have to uh, attack with it, spawn one, um, and then that can't attack until the next turn. So you're going to be slowly building your army because if they can't get rid of these, the the turn after that you can attack with two, which will spawn two more, and then by the time if they can't get rid of this, it's, it's game. So yeah, you this, this deck you need a snowball with this deck. So you want to get your get your tower out as soon as possible to get your shenanigans ready. And then for the level six, we are running four of the Eosmon from BD17. So we're running, this is the only level four, uh, 6 we're running because it's the only level 6 that we need. When digivolving, uh, when attacking once per turn, you can play an ES Mon from hand without paying its cost. And then, once per turn, whenever one of your ES Mon is played, you can delete one of your opponent's Digimon 
with as much or less DP than that Digimon. And then the third effect is for each Tamer, all of your ESmon get plus 1000 DP. So that's why you want to have as many Tamers on the board as possible, because you can make these into absolute monsters, which will then let you pop something really big on your opponent's board every turn. And if that doesn't work, if you can't pop them, you can de-digivolve them and then pop them afterwards. So it's good, it's pretty solid. And for the option, we're running three Cutting Edge. So Cutting Edge lets you play a level five or lower ES mod from your hand without paying at its cost. And then you can delete one of your opponent's Digimon with DP less than or equal to the play Digimon. So this, again, combos with the new ES mod because it will be getting the DP power, the DP plus as, as soon as you, it hits the board with this ability. So it'll be able to pop be able to pop as well as getting an extra body on the board. So it's pretty solid. So overall this deck, um, it's pretty fun to play, but it's very... The playstyle is very linear, so there's a lot of ways to play around it. And obviously there are times where you you will brick. You might draw one too many of these ESMON, and then you'll be like, well, I guess I'm just gonna hard cast this and swing, and then hope something happens but it is a fun deck this is probably one of my favorite gimmick decks to play there's a lot of gimmick decks in Digimon but I think this one is, is pretty it's pretty funny it's a pretty funny deck to play and yeah that is pretty much it for this deck profile I hope you guys enjoyed it if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment down below and if you want to support the channel feel free to join the membership program uh, if you guys are wondering where I got my play mat you guys can join membership and the template for the the template for the playmat will be on the there for the membership members, and you can also use the affiliate links down below if you want to support the channel as well. But that is pretty much it for this uh, deck profile, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. This is Karnaku, and I'll see you guys next time.